open up GarageBand. And it's going to look like the guitar off to the side of the Les Paul. Go ahead and click on that. GarageBand, like many Apple applications, are going to uh, have you decide what kind of project that you want to go with first. Um, in this case, we're just going to go with a, a typical, uh, well, let's go with a keyboard collection. Okay? And we're going to go ahead and choose that. Actually, let's go ahead and click on the grand piano at the top. Okay? That's the most basic one that will give you the most basic tracks to start with. Okay? And after we choose the piano, we're going to go ahead and click choose. Oh, the other part of Apple, which they tend to do a lot of, is they have you save up front. So to begin with, uh, come up with some name for your song that's going to be recognizable. Um, we're going to be doing a bunch of these, so don't leave it my song, otherwise it's going to be hard to find these later. So if anything, you know, title it like Song 1, you know, to start with. Okay, And then save it to a location where you're going to be able to find it. You can put it into your desktop, you can put it into your music, um, but be consistent with it so you can find wherever you're going to place this. For now, I'm going to put it as song one onto my desktop. Now, the stuff that's at the bottom here, the tempo, the signature, the key, leave all of that to begin with. Most of Apple's um, loops and music that they have preset on here are designed to be this tempo and the signature and key. So, we'll leave that and then we're going to go ahead and click create. Now to begin with, this is your GarageBand workspace. This is where you're going to be working within. There are three main panes that you have to work in. Okay, you have your tracks over here, so that's that part of it. And you'll be adding more tracks in. There'll be a whole list of them over here eventually. In the middle is kind of your workspace. This is where you're going to drag your music. This is where you'll see your recordings and anything else that you're basically doing here. A lot of your editing will be done in here. For the finer tuning um, of editing, you'll actually be coming down here to be doing that. For now, we'll just click that off. We don't need that up there right now. Okay, the last pane is actually your music. Okay, you can see by the music note here that I've got all the different music loops that are available to me. The nice thing about GarageBand is um, they're all organized by either the type of instrument that they are, so like guitars, uh, we've got percussion as in drums, um, acoustic anything, Okay, we've got woodwinds, brass, you name it, pretty much everything. Okay, so if um, you're not familiar with instruments, you can also go with genres. So rock, urban, world, electronic, anything like that that you uh, happen to be interested in. Okay, now um, to start with, uh, the most easy thing to do is just to start playing around in here, basically. I want to find a loop that I want to use to begin with. Okay, so if I click on any of my instruments up here, it's going to bring up all of my different loops. Now, if I go ahead and click on any one of these loops here, it's going to go ahead and it's going to give me a preview. Now, this loop is designed to keep looping over and over and over again. It'll just keep replaying constantly. 16 beats playing over and over again. Okay, So let's say, for instance, that I happen to like this loop. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the loop by clicking and dragging. I'm going to drag it right into my workspace here. I've got that clip in there and you can see it automatically creates a new track. Here's my loop. If I want to play it, this is my indicator. It's going to tell me wherever that is it's going to start playing. If I use my space bar, it will just start playing right away. There we have it. If I push space bar again, that pauses it. Then I can drag this back or I can use the controls back here to reset this. I've got my first loop in here. There's not really much to it, it's just an acoustic drum kit. But um, chances are that my loop is not the length of my song right now. It's not going to last nearly long enough. So there's a couple things that I can do with every single loop that you'll be able to drag in here. First off, if I go to the top right corner, you're going to see this curly Q thing pop up here. That's going to allow me to stretch out the loop for as long as I possibly want. Now I wouldn't recommend stretching it out too long, just a little bit at a time to begin with because the longer the loops are, the more processing power it takes for your computer and it starts to slow things down if you have a bunch of loops out there. So I drag this out, now I've got more, it'll just, this is an example of it looping. See and it just restarts and it keeps playing over and over again. Okay, so I got one instrument in there, I've got uh, the drums, uh, let's go ahead and get some uh, 
Let's see here if I can find some guitar. How about some bluesy harmonica to begin with? Well, there's... Okay, I got a blues guitar. Let's go ahead and try dragging that in. Every instrument I'm going to put onto its own loop here, or onto its own track. That way I can keep them organized and eventually I'm going to make adjustments to these tracks. I may want my drum kit to be louder, may want my electric guitar to be softer, and if I put them all on the same track, I won't be able to adjust that. And they won't be playing at the same time. So now to hear this, this is what we've got. Now, those two don't really go together well, but you're getting the idea here. Again, I would stretch this out so that it matches up the length of the acoustic drum kit. Let's say I wanted the drums to be a little bit louder, guitar to be a little bit softer. These are the volume sliders. They're going to let me make a, kind of overall adjustments to the whole track. Okay. Other things that you should know about the track buttons right now are if you want to hear one track by itself, let's say I just want to hear the guitar, this is a mute button. So I can mute the drum kit and now when I hit play, I've only got my drum kit. Okay. Now if I want to enable something to be able to record on a track, okay, I go ahead and I click record. Now the drum kit is not typically a track that you would use for recording, that's why I'm getting this error message here. Okay. So, um, anything else that you might want to adjust, this is the pan. The pan is like your left or right audio, so maybe I want the drums to come mostly out of one side or the other. Um, by using your rolling, the tracking ball on your uh, mouse, you can roll it to one side or the other. Okay, for now I'm going to keep everything at zeros here so that it's right in the middle of everything. Okay. Now, throughout this recording, you can see that any track that you can record on, it's picking up my voice. So this volume indicator over here, it's picking me up every time I speak into the mic. That's going to be useful later when we start doing audio tracks. For now, we're just going to be tinkering around with the different loops. Um, to have fun in GarageBand, you really have to get familiar with these. So um, go ahead, try a bunch of different ones. Um, if you don't like the genre that you're in, you can always click reset, and then you can go into specific ones. Like, I don't like that blues guitar. Maybe I want a different guitar altogether. Uh, melody line. Nice. Okay, so it gives you some ideas. There's a bunch of different stuff. Experiment around here. Drag in some different things. Um, try to come up with a uh, 15 second composition with at least four different tracks that are in there to begin with. Um, that's where we're going to start with. Um, try to get four instruments, four different instruments that actually work together well. Um, playing together for 15 seconds. That'll be your first composition that you put together. Now, at the end of all this, um, to begin with, we're just mixing these as GarageBand projects. So kind of like how we did Photoshop, where it was a Photoshop project. You could go back, you could see your layers, and you would know where everything is. We're going to keep our GarageBand thing exactly the same way. Eventually, we're going to start mixing these down as MP3s, and we'll get into more detail with that on the second tutorial. Um, so for today, keep your headphones on, have fun, and uh, experiment with some of these different loops to get familiar with them. Thanks.